Greetings, everyone. I'm Crystal Randall, GEHA's Account Manager for Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska. And joining me is Brian Sperling, our Senior Account Manager for Arizona and New Mexico. Brian will take over at the end of the presentation to answer your chat questions submitted during and after the webcast. We also have Senior Account Managers here responding to chat questions. Um, feel free to submit your questions at any time in the Q&A box. Today's presentation is an example of a B Benefits 101 session that your local GEHA account manager can provide to your employees, especially new hires. The content is generic and not carrier or plan specific. It's designed to help employees understand the many choices, plan choices they have as federal employees and how to choose the right plan for their needs. Now let's get started. Whether you are new to federal, whether you're a new federal employee or a longtime employee considering a change at open season, it helps to have an insurance game plan. Today's presentation will give you the tools needed to more confidently select a plan that's right for you. Investing a little time now in your insurance game plan can help you save thousands of dollars down the road. First, we'll go over some federal employee health benefits, or FEHB facts, along with some important terminology. Then, we'll look at some of the more popular plan types available to you and how they differ from one another. We'll spend a little more time on the HDHP option because of its unique savings component. We'll discuss the FedVIP dental and vision choices you have. And we'll also provide some resources you can use to help compare plans. Now let's get started. If you're new to federal service, here are some basic facts about the FEHB program. New employees have 60 days to enroll in a health plan. All FEHB plans cover pre-existing conditions with no waiting periods. You have the opportunity to change plans every year during open season. Certain life events allow you to change plans outside of open season. Generally, you must be enrolled in the FEHB program continuously for five years before retirement to be eligible for retirement after for enrollment after retirement. Let's get some insur important insurance terminology out of the way before we discuss what plan options are available to you. The basic component of any FEHB plan requ requires cost sharing from you, the member. That means you'll pay between 25 and 30 percent of the total premium, with the government covering the rest. Some postal employees pay a lower share of the premium because of bargaining arrangements. The other cost sharing components are copayments, deductibles, and coinsurance. Copayments or copays are fixed dollar amounts you pay for a covered service. For example, in an in network primary care doctor visit, Matt might have a $15 copay, while generic prescriptions may have a $10 copay. Deductibles usually work hand in hand with coinsurance. A deductible is a fixed amount of covered expenses you might incur before the plan starts paying benefits for those services. Coinsurance is a percentage of covered medical care that you pay after the deductible has been satisfied. The coinsurance amount accumulates until you reach the plan's yearly catastrophic limit. This is the maximum coinsurance you pay before your health plan um, pays all remaining covered expenses in a calendar year. Now that we've gotten some of the common insurance terms out of the way, let's talk about your FEHB plan options. As we go along, you'll want to start thinking about what you value most in a health plan. Do you want the ability to see any provider? Are you willing to pay a deductible in coinsurance? Are you planning a family soon and want 100% maternity benefits? Weighing what's most important to you and your family's needs will help you make the most important informed decision. 
An important step in choosing the plan that's right for you is making sure your providers participate in the plan you are considering. If they don't participate, you'll need to decide if you're willing to find new providers or pay more out of pocket. There are four general plan types of health plans to choose from in the FEHB program. Fee-for-service plans, health maintenance organizations, or HMOs, high deductible health plans, or HDHPs, and consumer-driven health plans, or CDHPs. We'll start with the fee-for-service plan option, also known as PPO, which stands for Preferred Provider Organization. In plan brochures, this option will be listed as fee-for-service with a preferred provider organization. OPM designates these fee-for-service plans as nationwide plans, which are also available to those living overseas. Traditional PPO plans allow you to see any provider in or out of network. You receive the maximum benefits under the plan when using in-network providers. PPO plans also do not require a referral from your primary care physicians to see a specialist. Many people choose this option because flexibility is most important to them. They may have covered dependents living out of state or they may have providers who do not accept insurance. With flexibility comes with more cost sharing in the form of deductibles and copayment and coinsurance on some covered services. When a fee for service with a fee for service plan, you usually pay a copayment at the doctor's office for any in network sick visit. If other services are performed during the visit, these may be subject to a deductible and coinsurance. Some fee-for-service plans provide different levels of in-service benefit, in-network benefits depending on the provider's network designation. Some may have no coverage out of network at all. Before enrolling in a plan, review the plan's brochure for complete details. An HMO plan provides care through a network of physicians, hospitals, and other providers in a geographic area known as a service area. Many HMOs require you to get a referral from your primary care physician to see a specialist. Generally, HMOs have fixed copayments for services like doctor's visits, emergency room services, or hospital admissions. Your out-of-pocket costs are more predictable with an HMO than a PPO, but also more restrictive for access to providers. Most HMOs only have planned to provide coverage outside of your service area for urgent or emergency care. Some HMOs provide physician services, labs, x-rays, and pharmacy services all under one roof at locations throughout their service area. High deductible health plans and consumer driven health plans, also known as HDHPs and CDHPs, are newer forms of fee for service plan. They offer even more flexibility than traditional fee for service plans and are designed to give you more control over your health care spending. When most people hear the words high deductible, they usually wonder why would anyone want a plan with a high deductible? Well, a qualified HDHP gives you access to a triple tax advantage health savings account, or HSA. The health plan and the member-owned HSA work together to keep you healthy and help you save money for your future medical expenses. Think about your monthly health plan contributions like an automatic premium rebate that gets passed through your health plan to your health savings account. This pass-through amount can help reduce the sting of, an out of a high deductible. HDHPs, they typically have lower premiums than most traditional fee-for-service plans. In-network preventive care services are free, 
meaning you won't have to use funds in your HSA to cover them. HDHPs also provide more comprehensive coverage when you need it. A qualified HSA is no ordinary savings account. It's packed with lots of tax-free goodness. It's the, the plan sets up your HSA and makes monthly tax-free contributions directly into your savings account. All unused funds roll over from year to year. HSA funds are yours to keep. If you leave the plan or leave federal service, your accumulated savings goes with you. You can make additional tax-free contributions to your HSA up to the annual IRS limits. Funds used for qualified medical expenses are not taxed. When you turn 65, you can use the accumulated money for anything without penalty. The IRS requires you to meet certain criteria to be eligible for an HSA. These requirements are listed in all HDHP plan brochures as well as on OPM's website. Read the plan brochures thoroughly. The amount of the premium pass-through contribution, annual deductible, and coinsurance will vary by plan. The last option we'll discuss is the Consumer Driven Health Plan, or CDHP option. The CDHP is a traditional fee-for-service plan with a personal care account, or PCA, the health plan funds this account on an annual basis and unused money rolls over from year to year. The amount added to the PCA varies by plan, as does the annual deductible and coinsurance amounts. Like HDHP, in-network preventive care is free and not deducted from your PCA. All eligible health care expenses are paid first from your PCA, sometimes referred to as first dollar coverage. When your account is depleted, you must pay your deductible before traditional coverage begins. Once your deductible has been satisfied, your planned copayments and current coinsurance will apply. Currently, the OPM website allows you to compare up to four health plans at a time. The comparison includes some of the most important factors like premiums, member quality ratings, and a summary of benefits. You can download each plan's brochure as well. The most common way to enroll or make changes to your health plan is through your agency's automated payroll and enrollment system. For many, this will be Employee Express. Using the SF-2809 is another way to enroll in an FEHB plan. Once completed and signed by you and your personnel office, you, you will be given a copy of the signed 2809. This will be your temporary proof of coverage until you receive your health insurance ID cards. We'll finish our insurance plan discussion with the Federal Employee Dental and Vision Insurance Program, or FEDVIP. Most FEHB plans have limited coverage for dental and vision. FEDVIP was introduced to provide a more comprehensive coverage to fill the gap. There are some important differences in how FEHB and FEDVIP are administered. Rules for family member eligibility are not the same. Eligible family members for FEDVIP include your spouse and unmarried dependent children under the age 22. This differs from FEHB, where dependent children up to age 26 are eligible, regardless of the dependent's marital status. Unlike FEHB, FEDVIP enrollment is handled directly by the employee and not agency personnel offices. Benefits acts as a clearinghouse for all FEDVIP approved plans. Any enrollment changes must be handled at Benefits.com or by calling Benefits. Here are some important facts about FEDVIP you should be aware of. New employees have 60 days to enroll. 
You do not have to be enrolled in an FEHB plan to enroll in a FEDVIT plan as long as you are eligible for FEHB. Annuitants do not have to be eligible or enrolled in the FEHB program. There are no pre-existing condition limitations. FEDVIP plans stand alone. You can choose a health plan from one carrier and a dental plan from a different insurance carrier. Some dental plans include vision for no additional premium. Check the plan brochures for details and, com and to compare plans. FEDVIP offers six nationwide PPO dental plans and four regional dental plans. There are four nationwide vision plans to choose from as well. Premiums for the six nationwide dental plans are based on your home zip code. To learn more about FEDVIP, visit opm.gov slash dental or opm.gov slash vision. Here you'll find the same type of comparison tool that's available for FEHB plans. Enter your zip code and the plans available in your area will be displayed along with the link to the plans website. Before we begin our Q&A portion with Brian, we would like to make you aware of a helpful guide, especially for new hires, called How to Choose a Health Plan. Visit geha.com and look for the New Hires quick link on the right-hand side of your homepage. Your local GEHA account manager can also send you a supply to keep on hand. Now let's turn it over to Brian. Thank you, Crystal. I'll go ahead and start out by sharing some of the questions that have come in on the chat. Um, I've got a question here. Uh, how long do I have to enroll as a new employee for FEHB benefits? And is it retroactive? And what's the earliest new employee coverage can take effect? All right, that's a great question. So um, as we mentioned earlier, you have 60 days, but it's 60 days from your entry on duty date uh, to enroll in the, in the FEHB Federal Health Benefits Program. So, and the coverage is not retroactive, meaning that if you, um, uh, if you started, for example, on May 15th, um, you cannot retroactively have the coverage take effect back to May 1st. Um, and also, the earliest it can take effect is the following pay, the first day of the following pay period um, from which you started. So, if you started on May 15th and then the pay period um, started uh, on, the, for example, May 20th then the earliest you could have your coverage take effect would be the first day of the following pay period, which would be, in, the, in our hypothetical example, May 20th. So that, that's a great question. Um, I've got another question here. Uh, what is premium conversion? Um, again, a great question. Uh, a lot of people get confused on this. Premium conversion is a pre-tax arrangement that allows part of your salary that goes for the health insurance premiums to be non-taxable. So generally, this is the preferred way to pay for your uh, federal health benefit plan premiums. Because if you set up your payments uh, in a pre-tax basis, it's, you know, you lose about 25% on each dollar for, in taxes. So uh, your dollars go a lot further when you're paying for your FEHB premiums uh, in a pre-tax basis. So I would recommend selecting uh, premium conversion uh, when you're uh, enrolling in your federal health benefit plan as a new employee. Uh, I've got another question here. Uh, can you give an example of what coinsurance is? And that, that really is an uh, excellent question because a lot of people get confused when they hear that amount, what that term is. And the best way to understand it is sometimes is just in a simple example. Um, the coinsurance is simply the percentage of of the claim that you pay. It's the amount portion that you pay on a claim. And to give you an example, let's say you had a, a PPO style plan that paid 85% uh, or 90% on a benefit. Well, the amount, the percentage left over that you have to pay, and in our example we'll say 15%, is the a term called coinsurance. So it's simply the percentage that you have to pay left over on a claim. So again, if that claim if the charge was $100 and the plan paid 85% of it, the plan would pay uh, $85 and that $15 left over would be your coinsurance or the percentage left over, the 15% left over. Um, so great question there. Um, I've also got another question here. What happens if someone 
uses an out-of-network provider under a PPO fee-for-service type plan. Well, many of these uh, fee-for-service and PPO type plans have uh, what's uh, out-of-network benefits in them, meaning that but there is coverage if you go out of network, but there is a reduced level of coverage. So for example, uh, if you went in network under a PPO style plan, and we used an example of 85% was paid on a claim, uh, the out of network benefit may be reduced by 20%. And you would, instead of the plan paying 85% on the service, it would only pay, let's say, 65%. But the other difference also is if you use an out of network provider is you don't receive any contractual pricing um, uh, that the plan had with that in-network provider. For example, if the list price on the charge was $200 and the uh, network price was $100, well, the plan would um, – uh, you wouldn't receive that $100 discount dropping the price from 200 to $100. And the plan is only going to be able to pay um, its out-of-network benefit based on what's called a plan allowed also. So you definitely want to avoid using an out-of-network provider, even if you have a PPO-style plan or a fee-for-service plan. Even though they have benefits for out-of-network services, you still want to use network providers as much as possible. Um, I've got another question here. I have dependents living in other states. Would a fee-for-service plan be preferred for this situation? And I would say yes on that. You're generally going to want a plan, a fee-for-service plan that um, cover. Now there are some fee-for-service plans that might not be national, but generally speaking, you're going to want a national fee-for-service plan, PPO style plan, in this type of scenario. Because uh, if you are living in, let's say, the state of Colorado, and you have a dependent uh, going away to school in Michigan, um, you're going to want them to be able to receive regular, um, regular treatment and care that is is even on a non-emergency basis. So you're going to want to look for a plan that has coverage in multiple states. And generally, the fee-for-service PPO-style plans are going to be those types of plans that are going to offer that type of coverage. So um, definitely would recommend that style of plan for that type of situation. All right, I've got another question in here. Uh, I am a new employee from the private sector and have an HSA from a prior employer. If I sign up for a high deductible health plan with an HSA, will the, with the federal program, can I transfer the funds I had in my private sector HSA? A, a very good question here. This is becoming a very, very a much more common question we're receiving uh, from new people joining federal services. They basically had a fee for service high deductible health plan with their prior employer, and now have moved to uh, uh, federal service and want to know what to do with this money that they had um, either contributed to their health savings account or their prior employer had given them in their health savings account. And the answer to that is, is you can do a tax-free transfer or HSA rollover from your old HSA account to your new HSA account. And generally, there's going to be a process. There's usually a form um, that you will send to your prior bank, your prior HSA bank, that your new HSA bank will give you saying that you want to transfer the funds from one HSA account to another. And then that will keep it in a tax-free status. The other thing to also note on that is that uh, under a tax-free status, um, you will, <clears throat> you, under a tax-free status, you'll have, um, you'll have a, <clears throat> a better benefit in moving it without it having any auto, uh, penalty. It won't count toward your contribution limit if you have a tax-free status when you do a transfer. So it's a, it's a great way to move HSA funds is to make sure you can do an HSA rollover or an HSA transfer. Now, um, I've got another question in here. Can you explain HDHP and HSA plans with more uh, more detail and how the contributions are made. All right, that's a great question. Um, so, for if you have an HDHP plan and HSA plan, and how do the contributions get into the HSA? That's a really the a number one question we get a lot of times. Is what happens is the funds um, 
you receive a, what's called a premium pass-through. So, for example, if you're a federal health plan, you're paying on average a premium of, let's say, uh, $250 a month. They're going to take a portion of that premium that you pay and give it back to you. And let's say they give you two, $125 back to you in the pass-through amount. That is the premium pass-through. So they'll take, you pay $250 a month in your federal health plan, plan premiums, and they'll take a portion of that premium, and in our example, $125, and put it into the HSA monthly for you. Um, you can also, through your payroll system, depending on which agency you work for, make additional contributions to the HSA account through uh, pre-tax allotment. Um, and there's a section in the payroll system, most of the payroll systems, MyPay and Employee Express, that will allow you to designate um, how much money you want to put additionally into the HSA account. All right, now I've got another question in here. Um, let's see here. My agency won't let me enroll for benefits until I've been working for 90 days. Since I would miss the 60-day enrollment period, would I have to wait until the open open period to enroll. So that sounds like they're pro from what I'm reading into that that scenario there is they're they're basically you have 60 days from your entry on duty date. So if they're not allowing you to enroll for 90 days, that might mean that you are probably um not considered st you may be in like a temporary status before you're eligible for full-time benefits. It's a little hard, it's a little tricky to answer this one without knowing a little more detail of the scenario, but it sounds like to me in this particular scenario that they, they haven't officially declared you and your entry on duty date. Um, and your entry on duty date, you have 60 days from your entry on duty date. So if they're telling you you have to wait 90 days before you can start your enrollment process, then you would have 60 days from the start of your enrollment process, and you would not miss your 60-day enrollment period. Um, most agencies do not have a 90-day delay in starting um, your enrollment process, so um, there may be a, a special scenario here that uh, I'm not aware of as far as uh, employment status in this particular question. All right, it looks like uh, those are the brunt of some of the questions that have come in for at this time, so we'll go ahead and close out our, our online chat question section. And now just a reminder, we have a great resource page off to the side that includes um, a link from OPM for new hires and a great uh, PDF summary of the, of the different programs in the new hire programs, such as FEHB, FedVIP, FSA Feds, FIGLI, uh, the Federal Long-Term Care Insurance Program. So take a look at those resource documents. I would highly recommend it. And you will also receive a copy of today's presentation via email and by, with it by the end of the week, and it will also be available for viewing on our website. Thank you, and have a great day, and hopefully you found today's uh, presentation helpful.